Get Rich Slow with John Wolf. Hey, today I'm going to talk to you about the basics of uh, what car salesmen learn in order to help convince you to take higher prices and maybe spend more money than you originally wanted to. So again, I'm John Wolf. I'm a loan officer in Oregon and Washington. I help with home loans, not car loans. Uh, today I'm going to show you just like what the sales managers teach the salesmen basically on the first day after the sales managers have decided that the salesperson is going to stick around and is worth teaching. So the first thing I want to get out there is I don't think that salespeople ever trick somebody into buying a car. I can't really foresee a realistic time where someone was like driving home from work, minding their own business. And then they got like slapped somehow. And the next thing they knew they were driving a different car home from work. You know, that doesn't really happen. But what does happen very frequently is that someone goes looking for a car and they really do have an intent to buy a car. Maybe not that minute, but they definitely are shopping for a car. And then by the time the transaction is over, they have agreed and driven away with the car with a much higher monthly payment than they had originally thought they would ever agree to. Now, I'll teach you sort of the basics of how that happens. And I do think it's really important. Um, people should try never to use the word trick in something like this, because if you say someone else tricked you, which I'm not going to say that never happens, but you're sort of giving up your responsibility for being the adult and taking care of yourself. And, that, and I'm not counting when people lie and stuff like that. That's totally different. But let me just show you the process that you go through at a normal car dealership that's doing their job well that sort of slowly moves you into spending a lot more money than you plan to. Okay, so first thing that's gonna happen, you're gonna go there, you're gonna say hello, you should totally be nice to the people, there's no reason why not to. Um, then you're gonna already know what car you want or cruise around a little bit, pick a car. Um, and at a certain point, you should hear out of the salesperson's mouth something very close to the equivalent of like, at the end of a test drive, so do you like it enough to own it today if the numbers are right? And um, at that point, your guards don't, need to go up because your answer probably should be yes, uh, unless it's just the wrong car, which is fine. Um, and then they're going to sit you down. They're going to ask you to fill out a credit app. I would normally go ahead and do this. And I'm talking to a normal customer who probably has the credit to buy a car, no problem. Um, just go ahead and do that because if you're financing, they make some money off the financing. So it's best to just let them do that uh, because it's not dollars directly out of your own pocket necessarily. And Sometimes it is, but that's more of an advanced thing. And I'm just going to the basics of how they convince you to spend more money. So anyways, you, you, you know, they're going to approach and uh, before they walk you inside, they're like, Hey, do, do, are you going to trade something in? And if the answer is yes, they're like, cool, can I see it? And they're going to go to the car. And if they're doing their job well, they're going to walk around the car with you um, and write some stuff down. But mostly every time they see anything that's not perfect about the car, they're going to go, Ooh, Ah, and, and what they're trying to do is they're, they're trying to show you all the imperfections in your car so that it decreases the value of your car in your mind. And they should do that. That's just playing the game the way it's supposed to be played. Um, and the good ones hardly say anything. It's, it's, it's really, it's an art form. Um, people could learn a lot about being a salesman by watching a really good salesperson for a couple days. But anyways, you know, then uh, after you've done the credit app or whatever, they're going to walk out to you with something uh, that looks like this. And it's called the Foursquare. Um, and this is something that a lot of other types of salesmen should figure out a way of doing because it's very effective at its mission. So anyways, you're going to have, you know, the client's name, the trade in and, you know, what they're buying. And then they're, they should always have a price written in permanent marker. Very important, the salesman who walks out to you cannot have that same kind of marker. It must be a smaller marker or a pen or a pencil. And uh, they're gonna say like, hey, how you doing? Shake your hand again. And then they're gonna say like, so we uh, you know, ran the numbers on your car and the last Volkswagen Jetta we took in was $300. And what they're trying to do is what's called uh, sealing you or, or take you to the ceiling. They're trying to provoke a response out of you. Um, and you, and you should respond, but you shouldn't get emotional. They're, they're trying to turn on your emotions. So you should be like, Oh, Oh no, I, I can't do that. Not, not $300. I, I was expecting to get uh, 15 and you probably just lowballed your own expectations when you said that, because it might be worth 2000. I don't know. I have no, it, honestly, the car that I'm referring to is a car that I literally caught on fire in an accident. So, you know, it's, uh, you might have a great trade in, but you know, anyways, you know, and 
they'll be like, okay, well, what, what if I can give you $500 and they'll just, and they'll try to do less than three and like, okay, well, 550. So if I get 550 for your trade, you're good. And one of the other things they're doing here is they don't even acknowledge this number. They do not want to talk about the price of their car. Now they're totally, they're often willing to discount it more if they have to, but the uh, salesman talking to you never has that authority. And he's supposed to just draw your attention over here. They want to have the fight over here. Cause you know, it's one thing, if you have an older trade that isn't worth much, you know, you're maybe talking about a thousand dollars total room for negotiation in any direction uh, in the form of reality. And over here, you might be talking about $5,000. So they want you over here. Does that make sense? Uh, and then, then they're going to um, say like, okay, so this next section is, so how much money uh, were you expecting to put down? Um, it's good to put 25% uh, down. So uh, $5,500 is about 20% down. Uh, were you planning on doing that today, sir? And most people buying cars right now do not put large down payments down. And I might get to this later in my finance section, a uh, different finance section, but it usually doesn't mathematically make sense to put money down unless maybe you're upside down on your trade and you have to, uh, because the, the loan to value for car loans usually doesn't really matter much. Like it does sometimes matter, but it usually doesn't matter to the pricing or at least not very much of the loan itself. So anyways, the, uh, you know, the typical customer and if a salesperson did a good job when you're on the car lot, uh, one of the slyest lines out there is to say something like, uh, you know, you're looking at the car that the car's looking at and you can tell they like it. So you're like, hey, by the way, I was just wondering, are you planning on paying cash for this or are you going to finance a little bit? And they do that to crown you up because they actually want you to agree to the highest cash value here, um, but not for the reasons most people think. So, you know, maybe uh, the, maybe you as the client say like, no, not 5,500, but, um, let's do, let's do $2,000. So they're like, okay, $2,000. Cool. A lot of people don't put a lot of money down. It's fine. See, they'll say something like that to kind of undermine your confidence because they're trying to pull you into the emotion. And then I, I didn't do any math before this. So laugh at me if you want, but they're going to say something like, okay, so for a car about this much, you know, most people with the best financing, do a $6,500 a month payment. And they will have hopefully already done the math for a 30, something like a 36 month loan with a higher interest rate and, and have about that number. And most people I can tell you who are looking at new cars and in, you know, the not luxury, cheaper, not truck trade are not expecting to pay something like this. Um, just about everybody who walks into a car lot says some variation of $200 a month and Again, they're trying to make you whoa, no. And they're what they're trying to do is they're trying to drag your expectations of a monthly payment up. And then they're going to uh, say like, oh, oh, sorry, I wasn't trying to offend you. So, so you're thinking more like 450, um, which by the way, if you're financing for 72 months, that's still a really high payment, but if, you know, shorter term, shorter payment. Um, and, you know, again, within three strokes, they're going to be like, well, you know, I could do, I could do 320 and, the, and the salesperson will get the client to state a number usually on their own volition, just blurts out of them. That's higher than that person ever intended to go. And that's the salesperson doing their job. And you know, oh, the way they did this wasn't by lying to you. They were just dragging your expectations around. Now, why is it so important to make this number high? Well, you know, the math for the loan is the math for the loan, but they're not trying to to just sell you the car. Uh, one of the two next people you're going to talk to uh, is, is the finance man or the guy who will help you wrap this up. And he is either the best or the second best salesperson that that dealership can put in front of you. And what he's gonna do is the easiest sale for him is let's say, let's say that the actual math for just the car is like $230 a month. And you already said you would be willing to do 320. So what he's going to do is he's going to um, set up what's called a pencil, which is just like all the math laid out with a few payment options and stuff. But in that pencil, he's going to include, and if he's doing his job correctly and well, he's not lying to you. He's going to include uh, um, aftermarket parts, aftermarket warranties, stuff that the dealership makes a lot of money on. And he's going to fit that all. He's going to try to be just below the payment that you want. And 
one thing that these people do sometimes that's dishonest on the first pass is they won't trick you into buying anything, but they'll actually show like a 310 payment to you, like 310 and some change as a certain number of months. But that's not where the math actually added up. The math actually added up somewhere lower. And they do that so that if you negotiate more with them on the price of the warranty or whatever, they can shrink that monthly payment without actually changing the price of anything. So that you walk out with the size loan they wanted you to walk out to. Um, but I hope I hope that this whole thing kind of makes sense to you in that it's it's how they drag your expectations around and they do this at two or three stages. Um, and a similar thing happens in a lot of sales environments, and it is one of the main ways salespeople actually earn their value for companies. And it's not that if they're doing their job correctly, they don't lie, cheat, or steal. They just drag expectations around. Now, certainly, lie, cheating, and stealing happens. But those people usually end up getting their comeuppance. I have seen it in a variety of ways. But uh, anyways, if you are a new budding salesperson, I challenge you to do the four square for practice on a bunch of your friends to kind of see what happens. And if you are someone who's going to buy a car, especially your first one um, at a car dealership, I totally recommend you bring an adult who is not easily swayed emotionally with you, or I mean, an older person. Like I just became 31, so I'm officially middle-aged now, I guess. Um, and even I don't necessarily consider myself an adult all the time. But, um, and before you go, you should actually practice the four square against each other because that this this four square this little sheet of paper is you know psychological warfare but it only works if you let yourself be uh can you know sucked into it so anyways if you like this video about how sales with variable price things work uh please comment like share subscribe i could do sort of a master class on this if people are interested anyways have an awesome day. Take care. Bye.